What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode, episode four of the Inside Scoop with your boy Scoopski. Today, we have my literal favorite person in the world on the stream. I'm very, very excited about this. A lot of talk about. And if y'all wanted to get inside of me, this is the episode to watch. Tell me where I'll be. I'm inside me. So we got no other than the one and only I think Momo you're supposed Cupcakes. to be inside me, but you know, whatever. <laughs> the Momo Cupcakes is making her appearance. <laughs> probably one of many appearances that Momo will make on the podcast. I got some ideas in mind. Um, but Momo, welcome to the Inside Scoops. Thank you for being here. Um, little intro about Momo. Tell us about, tell us about Momo. Um, there's not really a whole lot to tell. You have seen me around. You've all have more than likely chatted with me or seen me somewhere doing something, talking shit to somebody, typically where you'll find me. Um, if I'm not sitting in this chair, I'm usually on the bed right there with my taco pillow. Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> Yep. In my laptop, chatting with somebody. <laughs> yep. Other than that, I have a normal life. I get up, go to work, come home, just like everybody else. The extent of my life. Momo's a very exciting person. She downplays that a lot. <laughs> Don't listen to her, guys. Um, but anyways, I want to... This will be the episode, like I said in the intro. Um, this will be the episode where we get the most inside information on either myself or definitely myself but momo and just kind of how we are as a team um so i don't know even where to start with momo but let's go back way back in time so me and momo got together right before covid so 2019 yeah right august of 2019 um, and at the time I wasn't doing any sort of content creating. I wasn't, was I? No, we, um, we had a pool party that's we turned into a divorce party. We did have a divorce um, party, not from each other. <laughs> we should reference that. Um, so um, when me and Momo first got together, we were both going, actively going through a divorce. Um, and neither one of them were like great divorces. The uh, people that we were with were uh, shitty people. And if you're watching this at home, you fucking know who you are. You fucking cunt. Um, <laughs> Don't worry, she's not watching. <laughs> she might be. She's jealous. She's making content for her OnlyFans right now. That she probably does have an no OnlyFans. No, you will not see a pop up for that OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> But anyways, we started content creating, and I say we because we've always kind of been a team. Um, anything that I've done, her input has been heavily involved. Um, YouTube. We started on YouTube doing a fishing channel um, where we were just doing some bass fishing, had some fun. Here's a few pop-ups on the screen here of kind of the videos that we did. Um, and then I think one day I was just driving and or we were driving and i said i'm i'm gonna stream on twitch and we bought the pc put it all together and here we are a little over two years later um still going strong so momo what has been from the outside looking in the hardest or like the the most annoying or what are your takeaways from being with someone who's trying to be a content creator It's a lot. There's a lot that people don't see. There's a lot of, oh, you see, here's what I've put out. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what you can see from me. But they don't see a lot of what happens when you are not on camera. They don't see the hours of you making all these things happen. They don't see the countless nights that I've gone to bed by myself because you've been up trying to fix something that 
we didn't even know was broken until somebody said, hey, this isn't right. They don't see the the many days that it feels like I've been put on the back burner because you've done this to get where you are. So it's not for everybody. If you don't have that sense of, you have to have that reminder of, hey, this is the bad, but you have to take the bad with what comes with the good. So if you can't stick it out through the bad of what's happening, you're never going to survive the good. So they don't see a lot of the, the sacrifices that you have to go through in order for you to get where you need to be. No, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, and that's why I was talking to Tango about it in the, the first episode um, of the the thing, uh, the, the thing, the inside scoop. I can't even call it my own name. Um, so I was talking to Tango about it. And for those who you do watch the stream and you've been like OGs and chat, you know that at one point I was streaming pretty close to seven days a week. Like every day I was streaming. Um, and I was telling Tango that I felt like we weren't vibing. Um, as we should be, um, definitely a disconnect there. So people who watch the stream know I took about six months off and still playing video games, but playing video games and hanging out. Um, and we were playing some stuff together a little bit, stuff like that. So um, I think that's good advice to anybody who, who might be either going through some of those struggles or, you know, just don't want to get to that point make yourself a stream schedule that works for you and your partner um now it's kind of all flipped upside down because momo works later than i do um but hopefully that's just temporary so we'll get back on it but now if you're if you're watching um the stream if i'm basically if i'm not recording or editing one of these videos um just under momo's picture there is my uh, i'm sorry that's not twitch just under my picture is twitch TikTok's over there um, you can find me on Twitch almost every night if I'm not editing a video. So the next couple weeks, probably not going to be there because we're doing a whole bunch of stuff, but, um, have a stream schedule and make time for your family. Family comes first. And it took a lot for me to realize that. Um, what other impacts has like streaming had on us? I feel like there's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, the biggest question I get, well, I used to get asked a lot was, oh, you're okay with him just sitting at home playing video games all day? Well, yeah, because if you're at home playing video games, I know you. I know where you're at. I know you're safe. I know you're out doing something stupid. I don't have to worry about, oh my God, he went out with his friends. Is he going to come back home because the world is crazy? Who knows what's going to happen? Yes, I would rather you at home where you are safe, where I know you're not going to get into trouble that may or may not even be your fault you could have just been at the wrong place at the wrong time at least you're here being safe and a lot of people don't understand that like oh he just sits at home and plays video games well yeah it's better than him going out to a bar drinking with his friends true and you'll get a lot of those questions like how can you be okay with that well look at the pros and cons like yeah he's here playing video games but he's not in a dangerous situation or, so I'll or like out like hoeing myself out or anything <laughs> so <laughs> if you were under the arranger we're sitting in the driveway don't worry um so yeah, yeah. that's that's a another good point um i ha i don't get very many questions but usually it's from family um older generation family and they're like or do you really just sit at home and play video games what people also don't realize is i work a full-time job um in which i'm a supervisor for a tier three team for the fastest growing mobile provider in the world. So I, I'm, I stay busy. So coming home and playing video games is a release for me. And I know a lot of people can relate. It's just let me escape for a little bit. Um, so Momo makes a good point, though, that I'm not I could be out doing stupid stuff. Instead, I'm sitting here in Almazra doing stupid stuff there. So um, where? That's the name of the map on Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you would get the reference, but I've said it enough. I figured you might have. Um, yeah, no, streaming definitely has, like you said, um, pros and cons for sure. So I definitely recommend y'all weigh out the pros and cons and weed out the cons as much as you can. Um, 
because you can kind of control that, right? So um, that's being that being said, Momo, Momo did used to stream, as y'all can see um, on the screen where it's just her video. There is a Twitch link there. Um, I've been trying to talk her into streaming more. Um, and this brings us kind of like a segue into our next point that we wanted to talk about um, is streaming what are your takes on being a content creator it's rough um and the reason i stopped streaming is because people stopped showing up and so what was the point of me sitting there if nobody's going to show up it felt like a waste of time so i just essentially gave up and said if nobody wants to come watch me play video games then i'm just not going to do it it's kind of where we've been yeah um and I think a lot of content creators have probably been there. Um, me and Tango talked about it. Um, I've talked about it with a lot of people where when you first start streaming, and I think some people, including myself, are a little bit of an exception to it. Um, when you first start streaming, it is the hardest time to stream. Some people go years with one or two viewers. Um, and it's rough. It's rough to kind of break in, especially it depends on what games you're playing and stuff like that. But um, how many times have I ended a stream and just said, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm over this. Well, why don't you cry about it? Too many to count. Yes. Oh, oh my. <laughs> it hasn't happened very often because I've, I've taught myself to not give a shit. But um, yes, it happens way too often to me. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I have considered throwing in the towel on several occasions, not because I had a bad stream or one bad stream or two bad streams, um, but you do go through stints, especially. So for me, I finally made my footprint in the MLB community after a couple months of streaming, maybe a month or two of streaming. Um, and within seven days, I was an affiliate. So it's a little bit different because not that's not everybody's experience. Um, even in the MLB community, which is huge now compared to what it was at, during COVID. Um, but yeah, I, I have myself considered quitting several times because you see that one in the top of your screen with Streamlabs, OBS, whatever you're using, you see that viewer count and it's just sitting at one and you know that's your wife that's just laying on the bed sleeping. Um, you you got to like... It, it hurts sometimes but you got to separate yourself from that stay true to yourself keep doing what you're doing it will pay off in the end you just gotta you know network find the right games to play that you enjoy playing that you can talk a lot during playing it because that's a big part of it too and tango said it last time get a fucking webcam just get a webcam I mean, I get it. some people not wanting to be on webcam because they, they think they're ugly. If this face can do it, your face can do it. I promise you that. Um, so, will we ever see a Momo stream again? They are far and few in between. Um, we did one, what, a couple weeks ago? Something like that, yeah. Where we played Fall Guys for a little bit. Um, they're very hit or miss. They will show up when they show up and not show up when they don't show up i guess <laughs> um it's it's just that i have to find that motivation to be like okay i'm gonna do this even though i know nobody's gonna show up i'm gonna show up yeah and that's what you gotta do you gotta show up when nobody else is showing up because eventually people are gonna show up and i'm not just talking to the people watching this video i'm talking to her too her being she's sitting right next to me um <laughs> She's going. It's funny because if I look this way, if I look at you, we're both looking the opposite direction of the game. Like it's weird. Um, but yeah, so you got people will show up. Um, Momo has the benefit of being like an ultra moderator on Twitch. Basically, she moderates for is it eight different channels now? You hold on. Huh? I think I got an eyelash in my eye. Oh. Are you good? You look like a crazy person with your eyes on. <laughs> oh. Okay, cool. we're good. We're good. 
<laughs> and we're back. So. <laughs> uh. um, so how many how many channels are you moderating in right now? Is it eight? Did the number drop to eight? Yeah, yeah I got booted from one. Well, we're gonna so. talk about that. Let me write that yeah. down. Um, got kicked from one. I don't know why my camera about... is so blurry. It's good. It's a little blurry, but um so we'll, we'll we'll circle back to that but momo has had the benefit of moderating nine channels when you're in a chat long enough to be a mod you've created a, a pretty big impact in that community so i wanted to be known that just because you're in a lot of people's chats you can still see momo still struggles with the viewers nothing against her um She's entertaining to watch when people are in there. Like it's it's a lot easier to talk to people. So you'll notice in my streams, I don't talk very much. If there's no one in there talking, like I suck at talking to myself, which is a big part of streaming. So um, it, when you see Momo go live, turn the notifications on and go check her out because it's a very entertaining stream. And usually she's playing some throwbacks like some Mario, um, stuff like that. We're gonna get into our our top five, top three favorite games, whatever we're gonna do of all time um so we will try that and see how that goes a little segment um but yeah so i forgot where i was going with this oh yeah so just because you're in a bunch of people's communities um there's people that have been in my stream for two years and i didn't even know they streamed so Find ways to get yourself out there, I guess is what I'm saying, and, and put yourself out there. Twitter's a big place for streamers. Instagram's pretty big for streamers. TikTok is the biggest thing ever. TikTok will definitely help. So get your stuff on TikTok. Um, I'll put a link down below in the description of um, a website called CrossClip where you can just take your clips from Twitch and turn them into TikTok videos. Um, so that'll help you just kind of branch out so hopefully that helps um so let's go let's talk about the one that got away the, the channel that you're not a mod in let's try not to say names because it's not the content creator's fault uh. but this is the inside scoop where we don't hold anything <laughs> back so we're gonna talk our shit um <sighs> why is it so blurry can you not see that it is a little blurry. I don't know how to fix it. Is it because I still have this plastic thing on my camera? Take the plastic off. Well, that didn't do anything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's fine. I think it's okay. Um, all right. So I don't even know where to begin with this. So <laughs> what are your thoughts on the situation? Let's start with your thoughts. Um, I, and I've said this before, and I've, I think he, the person is a puppet in a bigger scheme and is just being the front man to take the rap when something bad hits the ground and not the smartest person. We all know that we've all had a conversation with him. Not the brightest person. Definitely feel like he's uh, being manipulated in a way that he's too blinded by the flashy money and the flashy giveaways to see what exactly is going on and the said person pulling the strings doesn't like conflict so when people start questioning things and start saying hey this doesn't make sense hey why are you saying these things you're supposed to be saying you're supposed to be spreading positivity but yeah you're sitting here saying mean things to people how are you supporting positivity when this is happening and it's not necessarily me. I'm not the only one that they've, they've essentially shut out. They've shut out a couple of other people as well because these people have started asking questions of, hey, you said this is, and this was going to happen, but this is, and this never happened. Why? You told me I was going to get this. Why hasn't that happened yet? So when people start asking questions, that seems to be where people start getting moved into different places because they don't want that conflict of, oh, somebody's questioning what I'm doing when they should just go with the flow. And they don't like the pushback that people are getting when, like, uh, I was told two weeks ago that my package was being shipped out and I was going to get what I won in the mail. And that was two weeks ago. And when I reached out and said, 
hey, I never got this. Why didn't I get this? It was excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse as to why this didn't happen. And it wasn't just me. There's another person that um, that I talk to regularly that I've been, hey, have you gotten your package too? Well, no, I never got mine either. Well, what did they tell you? And it's, they're telling one person one thing and another person something else. And it's, it's a big fuck you for questioning what I'm trying to do instead of just going with the flow is all that it, it boils down to. Yeah, and that's yeah. why I got booted. So, <laughs> I, we kind of skipped the actual story, kind of. So there's a, a streamer, content creator, MLB. Um, I think he's playing a little bit of a variety of stuff now. Um, great streamer, great guy. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. He's, he's a good guy. Um, who has picked up a sponsor for his channel and rebranded everything. And I, I like the idea of, of a rebrand. I'm not against a rebrand. However, um, the way they're doing it is just not right. Um, so they did some giveaways for PlayStation 5s and Xboxes, but it's just like put on a wheel to where you spin it and... You could win a PS4, not a PS5. So you're saying PS5 giveaway, and I watched three people win two Xbox Ones and a PS4. Like, that's textbook false advertising. Um, it basically, it's clickbait is what it is. They're trying to get people in. Um, they have given away systems. They have given away PS5 to, I think, three veterans. Um, I know at least one of the moderators in their chat got one, too. Two of them. Two of them. So they are legitimately giving away PS5s, but at points it's branded like it's a giveaway that it's not. Um, the way they are running the giveaways, they are making it to where watch time, for instance. If you're in someone's chat and put exclamation watch time, if they have the command set up, um, it'll show you how many hours you've watched this person's stream. For every hour, they basically gave this person another ticket to win the PS5. Um, it's against terms of services. If you're watching this, don't do that. Um, you can get banned from Twitch for doing that because it is against terms and services. Um, everybody has to have an equal opportunity to win it. No one can have any special favors. So he was giving stuff away. We heard one time, oh, we're going we're gonna to give this person an extra entry because I like this person. And that was the sponsor saying that, not the content creator, the sponsor. I think it's important to say that we like the streamer, but the sponsor can go eat a bag of dicks. Yeah. Um, and his name is Aaron. The, not the streamer, the sponsor. His name is Aaron. Aaron, if you watch this, suck a dick. I, I, I hate, I cannot stand you. You are the worst type of human being. Um, but back to positivity. Um, but it, and that's another thing that he... They're preaching that, like, oh, we're doing all these things. We're giving back to the community. We're doing this. It's supposed to be positive. It's supposed to be this uplifting environment where everybody is welcome. But that you're sitting here saying that, like, oh, you're lucky you guys are mods. Thank you, God! Well, why are we lucky? We've put in the time before you even came along. We're lucky. No. Well, I'm not a mod, but they should feel lucky to be a mod. And that and we should be... And we, we should be grateful. And I was... Grateful be, for what? Like, I don't have anything to be grateful for. for. You should be and, grateful for what we're doing is what it was said. And his response to that is, uh, I should be grateful for their giveaways. Yeah. And I was like, no. Yeah, sure. First of all, right here. like, we were here before these giveaways even started. So whether or not you keep giving these giveaways or you stop doing these giveaways, the people that are here before the giveaway started are still going to be here. But what seems to be happening now is, like, there's me and another person who have been there for at least a good two years now and it's we're getting put on the back burner and all of these new people that are coming in are getting taken care of like there was one girl who just magically appeared out of nowhere that we were like who the fuck is this girl we've never even heard of her like where did she even come from but yet she's going to meet with them in person to get her ps5 which okay cool whatever oh she's I'm like pretty she... heavily in there now Another content creator. I'll throw her stuff up on the screen. Would you not be if somebody gave you a PS5? No. Me personally? No. 
I don't give a shit. I don't like you that much. I'm bad at watching people on Twitch. And like, don't get me wrong. Like, I have nothing against her. She's a she's a great person. She's she's, she's, cool she's fun to watch. Like, she plays Fortnite with Sophia all the time, and I absolutely love Sophia. Sophia's Sophia awesome. is phenomenal. Um, and it's nothing against them at all. It has nothing to do with these people that are now mods in this chat. But it's like, okay, me and me and Mullins have been in there for ever and a year, but we can't even get the decency for you to be like, hey. And it's not about the money. I don't give a fuck about it, right? Like, it's 120 bucks, whatever. Call it a day. Mullins won 100 bucks, whatever. Fuck it. It's not about that. The principle of it is you're supporting these people who are only showing up for giveaways, and you're essentially saying, fuck the people who have been there before the giveaways started. Yeah. Like, where is the loyalty to the people that showed up when you weren't doing giveaways? Just fuck us, right? Is essentially what it comes down to. Yeah. And that's how I, I did it, too. Um, so, unfortunately, that led to me. I don't know um momo standing on it but i i just i'm not going to support somebody who's got those kind of people in their corner that are pulling those strings so to speak um again it's not the streamer if you watch this i'm i'm intentionally not saying names um but you know who you are if you're watching this and um it's not you it's definitely not you you're a great content creator uh a great person to watch very entertaining like people pulling strings behind the scenes and i don't know what kind of kickback you're getting from it if the money talks and bullshit walks so um i'll keep it at that but so i get it i get it there's there's strings being pulled and you know maybe he's getting a nice kickback from it i don't know but we'll see we'll see where that goes um which i also find hard to believe when he's said from the beginning that this sponsor is covering 75% of the cost, but he's paying the other 25%. What sponsor makes you pay for what they're sponsoring? That's a, an, another valid point. Um, good point. So the way sponsorships typically work is say I'm sponsored by G Fuel. We'll use G Fuel as an example. If I'm sponsored by G Fuel, G Fuel is going to send me a box and say, hey, here's five of our newest flavors. Give them away on your stream. I didn't pay for anything. They literally just send them to me. And in turn, I push traffic to their website, and that's where they make their money. So I don't need to pay them anything. Um, that's how streamers work or sponsors work. Um, and then you also have affiliate programs where nobody pays anybody anything, but if people go to my link, um, they can buy some stuff for normal price. Maybe a discount. Like, sometimes it's I like think 10%. it's ten percent off. Some of them are, are different. Um, I'm looking into several different ones right now um, to add for specifically for the podcast. I want to have a sponsor for the podcast, so we'll see. We'll see what we can end up with. But I got two for the stream. Both links are down below. Um, the Upside app. If you're purchasing gas, well, I guess we'll do a little ad spot here. Um, if you're tired of fucking gas prices going up, use the Upside app. You, we both use it, and. Um, you will get one cent cash back on everybody that you refer. If so, if I refer her, I get one cent uh, cash back for every gallon of gas that she buys. Um, on top of that, you can get anywhere. I think I've seen it as high as twenty percent um, cash back, or not twenty percent, twenty cents per gallon cash back, just for buying the gas that you're already going to buy. So if you're not already using it, use the Upside app. Link down in the description below. You can um, click that, sign up, and I think you get a, a nice little deal on your, your first purchase of gasoline. Um, and then the other one is Rogue Energy. It's just a, a really good energy drink. We actually really enjoy it. Um, great flavors. It's Except cheaper. the mango. Do, Do not, not buy the mango. It sucks. Don't buy the mango. <laughs> grape. grape is really good. I think it's Grape Popsicle. That's the name of the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, Their cherry limeade is good, too. But it's... Zero, zero sugar, zero calories, or zero carbs. I don't know. It's like all zero. It's a little bit healthier for you. It's not loaded with sugar. There's no crash. Um, it just tastes great. You can use it um, as a pre-workout. They have like a ultra or whatever they call it. This is a terrible ad read. Um, but yeah, go check them out. They have shakes as well, which I, I hear are really good as well. So go check them out. Rogue Energy upside down in the uh, description below. And I appreciate it. And uh, Rogue Energy, any purchase, you get 10% off. So, thanks.
thanks for doing that. Now back to this scene here. Um, where were we? What were we talking about? Why I got kicked out of being oh, yeah. a mod. So, <laughs> um, those are affiliate links, those two that I, I just mentioned. So, um, keep those in mind. If you're looking for maybe a way to make some extra side money, I don't think I've made a whole lot off of either one of those. Um, so one thing I've always said is I don't stream for the money. I think just looping back to some streaming advice, don't expect to turn this into a full-time job. Um, a very small fraction of content creators can do this full-time. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Like if someone were trying to be a full-time content creator, what would you say? I think it's great for a young child. Like somebody like 16, 17, doesn't really have a whole lot going on, just trying to make some extra money to get by. Um, I think it's great to start there. Yes. Um, especially starting with being so young, you have that time to grow, expand, figure out what works, get into people that do things that make sense. Um, you have the time to build those connections, chat with people who are have already done what you're trying to do, figure out what they did, how they got there. Um, but I think somebody coming in that already has a full-time job, has responsibilities, trying to essentially quit everything that you're doing and to create content full-time, it just seems a little unrealistic. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I think another thing is, too, if you are that, I think you have to be 13 or older to, to stream on Twitch. Um, I could be wrong on that. Um, but... If you are a younger kid, definitely, and this is the parent in me coming out, have a backup plan. Um, you don't have to go to college. I didn't go to college. I make really good money. Um, Momo didn't go to college. She makes good money. I did go to college. Momo didn't go to college. She doesn't use her degree. It doesn't matter. She wasted money. It still makes good money. Um, you don't have to go to college. I'll tell my kid this all day long. Um, but you have to have a plan for what you're going to do. So... Um, whether it be a trade school or just learning a skill that is useful, has some job security, um, just don't flip burgers. Flipping burgers is not a plan. Um, so nothing wrong with having a job like that. But if you're going to stream, have a, have a plan to, to have some income too. Um, and don't kill yourself streaming because it's exhausting. Streaming can be mentally and physically exhausting. So, uh, just making this podcast is kind of sometimes kind of exhausting where we're, we're just constantly recording and, um, all the work that goes in behind the scenes to get it set up and having to reach out to people and work on schedules and editing afterwards. Like it's, it's kind of a lot. So we need to find that, um, that middle ground. So, um, back to the flipping burgers. Flipping burgers is not a bad thing. Don't take that as a, oh, this is a bad thing, because that could lead to great opportunities. You could start off being a line cook at McDonald's who flips hamburgers. Great. But then there's also that opportunity to move up. You could be a manager. You could be a store manager. You could be a general manager. Like the girl that I went to high school with, her dad is a general manager at McDonald's, and he started making hamburgers, and he worked his way up. And now he makes very good money being a general manager for McDonald's. So if that's something that you want to do, use it as a stepping stone to further on. Don't get stuck in this, oh, I'm just going to sit here and flip burgers for the rest of my life. Yes. Have so. climbed the, the ladder, so to speak. The food industry is not a bad industry to be in um, at all because there's always going to be a need for it. So um, that as well. Another industry that I can personally speak on that is not bad for young people. I don't think we hire less than 18, though. So keep that in mind um is the cable industry cable cell phones stuff like any any sort of tech industry um we're in the austin texas area um and tech is really big here we're like the tech the uh, the new tech capital of the world um so I know majority of the reason you don't hire people under the age of 18 is because they are only allowed to work until a certain hour yeah. because of school days um i, I want to say it's 10 o'clock on the school days 11 o'clock on the weekends because of the labor laws and that's probably why you don't hire people under the age of 18 so but definitely a good field to get in and it still leaves me plenty of time to be a content creator so um more on our jobs as the podcast expands i'm sure um i'll probably never tell you what company i work for i know there's some people who watch that know what company i work for um momo knows because she works there too so (laughs) 
but yes, I um i have to we have social media rules that we have to follow at work and that means completely separating this from work so i can't mention them um but let's go back to video games let's talk current games first any new games that you've, you've watched people play you've played yourself games that you think i should play not really i mean a lot of the people that i typically watch are playing call of duty mlb the kuznick who plays gta all the time <laughs> watch him be a yeah. doctor and a farmer all in one stream i mean hey who knows whatever's possible right i'm really excited um, to talk to him about the life of <laughs> gta rp people i'm really excited to talk to him about that um so i don't i don't typically branch out i mean i i do branch out only if they're like hey this person's rating this person um just hanging out seeing people oh hey this person went live oh let's go see what this person has to offer let's go see what they enjoy doing um is typically how i get around <laughs> i guess to call it um but a lot of people are they play the same things fortnite call of duty mlb um it's typically the same things that i watch yeah um so mine are a little different i got i don't want to bad mouth a genre of game but i don't i guess it's rpg um adventure style games um i don't like them i don't know what it is um i, I i'll do assassin's creed um what's another one that i play I like that game valhalla valhalla yeah the newest assassin's creed um you tried to play that one game um elder scrolls used to be really fun i might get back into that that one game that Pat plays all the time. New, New World. World. New World. It's an Amazon game. Very fun game. It just doesn't hold my attention very much. Um, so I have a lot of that on my, the people I follow, which is cool. Um, they're, they're entertaining people, and that's why I go there. I don't really go for the gameplay. I go for the people. Um, but current games that I'm really, I'm really liking Warzone 2. Um, I know a lot of people are giving it a hard time on the internet the interwebs it's a shitty place sometimes but yeah there's a lot of people shitting on the game um and it looks like they've done it enough to where activision has decided to make some changes to the game itself so we're kind of going back in time to warzone one stuff a little bit so we'll see how that goes i'm not too excited about it but i know a lot of people are um mlb 22 as of recording this we're one day away we are tw uh, 22 hours away from finding out who's on the cover of the game. So um, this podcast won't come out for probably another few weeks. So um, there will be some podcasts before this that you just probably hopefully watched that talk about that. Um, so I'm excited about tw MLB 23, which usually I'm not. Usually I don't know I want the game until I have the game because someone buys it for me on valentine's day every day every year so um I'm, I'm really excited for this one um to see what they bring back um and to hopefully do some stuff with viewers this year um and kind of branch into that um and i gotta figure out franchise i gotta figure out franchise in mlb um what are the current games man eater it's not a current game it's not new um, but Man Eater is a fun game. Absolutely loved it. It was a blast the entire time. Um, you get to be a shark. What's better than that? Um, what else have I played that you liked? Man Eater was cool. I, and I think your issue with a lot of the open world games is that there's not really a reward for it. It's, it's kind of like a, oh, you just run around and do whatever. And, oh, you run into these people, you get to kill them. Fantastic. Great. Yeah, there's I mean, not really like that. You get like suits and stuff like that. I just you don't get them. It's not like the camo grind in Call of Duty where I was getting like a new camo almost every game, right? It's just blowing through that, and I could just show it off to people. Yeah. Um, and when I kill you with my gun, you're gonna watch a kill cam of me holding that gun. So, um, it's like a little show off, a little little flex on people, um, which you don't really get the satisfaction sometimes in those other games. So. I think you're right. Um, let's go top five. I'm gonna put two lists up on the screen. 
top five games, we'll do like draft style. So you do your number five, I'll do my, or your number one, I'll do my number one. You'll do your number two, I'll do my number two. Um, let's do that. So you go first. What is your number one all time favorite game? I probably should, we probably should have wrote these down beforehand. We're doing this on the fly, so bear with us. Um, I would have to say anything Super Mario because their Super Mario World has came out with. If you remember playing it on the Super Nintendo versus playing Super Mario Odyssey, it's came a very long way, and it's still that. Here's a level. We beat these levels. We go on. We beat this level. We go on to the next level. There's that constant path of I'm succeeding by beating these levels. Yeah. And it's it's very. I think the issue with the Super Mario Odyssey is it reminds me so much of playing Super Mario as a kid, and that's why I revert back to playing Super Mario. And Luigi's Mansion and another one, the same concept. You get rewarded for doing these things and just. Yeah. Brings back to my childhood. Luigi's Mansion was fun. Um, I think my number one favorite game, like a game I can always play no matter what. God, that's hard. I would say my all-time favorite game was NFL Blitz. Like the old, on the original Xbox, NFL Blitz. Not the new shit. The new shit sucked. But I think that would be like my all-time favorite game. Actually, no, I take that back. Scratch that. Um, Skate Three. Skate Three is my all-time favorite game. Are they supposed to redo a remake? They are. They are remaking it. There's no new information. They announced it at E3, um, and there's been no information since. But I'm hoping end of this year or early next year. So we'll see. Um, what's your number two? So you may get a new name for uh, Christmas or Valentine's Day? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. It would suck if it, it comes out beginning of game. next year after Valentine's Day, then you might have to get me two games for Valentine's Day. Two games? I'm trying to play the system? Yes, um, trying to play the system. I mean, I typically buy it anyways. You kind of oh i want this and then it just magically appears the next day she so <laughs> is great at that and i feel bad for how bad i am at it because she'll she sent me a picture of a ring the other day and <laughs> i was like oh that's a nice ring and that was it into the conversation just the text messages um and then i said hey what do you want for valentine's this is like a week later what do you want for valentine's day well i want that ring i sent you and I was like, oh, I, I didn't even put it together in my head. Show them the ring. I know you're wearing it. Oh, this one? Yeah. Down. Oh, it's upside down. There you go. So it's just a little James Avery ring. It says forever and always on it. Very nice ring. Um, did I even pay for that or did you pay for that? <laughs> my money's her money. Her money's my money. It's our okay. money. Um, <laughs> she doesn't apparently think so. Um... So yeah, so I'm terrible. I don't want to say I'm a bad gift giver because I've given some pretty good gifts um, lately. Last Christmas, we're going to talk a little bit more about this too. Last Christmas. Last Christmas, I gave her my heart, literally, <laughs> um, is when we I proposed to her the week before Christmas, a month before Christmas, something like that. I don't remember. Somewhere. I don't remember. Um, pretty terrible about it. I just know there was Christmas decorations up when I did it. Um, so we'll get into that. Um, what about your second overall all-time game? Or franchise, I guess you can pick a franchise too. I don't really know, because I don't really play a whole lot of different games. Um, I kind of get used for my bot lobbies and you need somebody to play Fortnite with. Yes. <laughs> She, she does not um, have any uh, Fortnite skills. But she hey, I, saved, I did save you that one time did, you got shot. She did kill somebody. I believe that was in Warzone. <laughs> um, she did kill somebody in Warzone. It's a they were moment. shooting at you. Um, and let's see if I can help you out here. Old school games. Did you play Pac-Man back in the day? I did. Were you a fan of Pac-Man? Uh, it's 
okay. I wouldn't go out of my way to play Pac-Man. Okay. Um, I think I played Tetris more than I played Pac-Man. Tetris? So Tetris number two? We can go for that just for the sake of argument. Yeah. Okay. Um, my number two, I'm going to go the Call of Duty franchise. Just all of them. There hasn't been one. If I was to pick one, just for the sake of doing this list, it's going to be Call of Duty Ghost. Um, I know. People are watching this going, Ugh, fuck off. Call of Duty Ghost was good. Um, they have zombies in that? They might have had Call of Duty zombies and Ghost. I don't remember. I wasn't playing zombies at the time. Um, I didn't really start playing zombies until we started playing zombies together. I didn't really play them too much. Um, oh, there you go. Momo loves Call of Duty zombies. There's her number three right there. Bing. Um... She loves Call of Duty Zombies. That was always fun. Um, number three for me. Shit, I don't even know. MLB, I guess. MLB franchise would be number three. Yeah. So, it's a good game. People give it shit all the time, but it's a good game. Um, and then, yeah. I think we can leave that at three because I'm running out of options myself because I don't branch out a whole lot of games too often so we're gonna leave it at three i know i probably said five but I, scratch that i do think they need to bring back the simpsons hit and run the which one? Oh, simpsons, the hit, simpsons and run. hit and run god i wish they would remake yes. something like that because that used to be my jam back in the day <laughs> and that's the crazy thing is they're remaking i don't want to say remaking but they're making new south park games um and they're free on playstation plus right now so i might try them out on stream um, but I'm not sure, but Simpsons has got to be more popular than South Park, right? So I would like to see, I don't know who made that game, but whoever made it, Simpsons hit and run. We need to read. Thank you. I have played I it on stream. I think it's an EA game. It may be EA. I think you might be right. Um, but yeah, remake the Simpsons hit and run or make another Simpsons game. That's what we need. So, nice little call out there. I did like that game. Um, let's talk about... Probably should have led with this, but... Um, just us, us as a couple. We kind of started there, and then we got off track, and now we're back. Um, so, we've been together since 2019. COVID. So, a lot of people kind of bitch or joke or whatever however you want to say it they they say oh you know covid's gonna ruin marriages because people are stuck inside together now and now they're starting to hate their significant other um do you think covid had an impact on our relationship at all i think if you would have stayed home for those two months that i stayed home it may have but you were considered an essential worker, so you still had to leave and go to work, and I didn't. Yeah. So it essentially was the same thing as like, hey, you were gone for eight hours a day. I was gone for eight hours a day. We didn't see each other for those eight hours. I only got you back at the normal time that you'd have came home anyways. Yeah. So I, I don't think I played too much into a factor of that, just because yeah. I didn't spend eight weeks trapped in a house with you saying, leave me alone, you're getting on my nerves. Like. I, I didn't have that That's a that good time. Um, so those who don't know, Momo used to be in the dentistry field, I guess. She's always kind of been like an office administrator for um, a dentist. Um, the last dentist job you had, what was your position? You were insurance coordinator? She was an insurance coordinator for a pediatric dentist. Um, and the girls that she worked with were awesome. So surprised that she left but she left for the reasons um and here we are i think we're on a better path or an equally as good path so um that's why she didn't have to work and i was an essential worker and she wasn't because they physically couldn't be there so um yeah i don't think i don't think covid really played a part in my life at all um shit i couldn't get covid if i wanted it for the first two years we tried. I think I actively tried. Aside from licking doorknobs, like, I was not avoiding COVID. 
Um, cause it's two weeks paid off. Okay. I'll get sick for two weeks. Like, I don't give a shit. And then I got COVID and now, uh, I will never say that again. Um, fun fact about me getting COVID. We went to a baseball game. This is a foul ball that I got at the baseball game. Um, it was Round Rock Express versus San Antonio. No, they weren't playing San Antonio. I don't know who they were playing. Um, El Paso. Houston's people. No, that was a different game. That was the game that me and you went to after the Astros game. Where we had really fucking good seats. Like, two rows back. Um, oh, anyways. and that guy was an asshole for you and wouldn't sign the ball? <laughs> yeah. Um, Delano De Shields, if you're watching this. He's not, don't can you, worry. Can you sign this baseball for me? Because <laughs> you couldn't sign it last time because of COVID. <laughs> What's your excuse now? <laughs> Delano De Shields refused to sign my baseball for me. Um, so, fun fact. Thanks, Delano. Appreciate it. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that was really the only impact that COVID ever had on my life was when I actually got COVID. Um, I had to wear the mask at work, which was kind of an inconvenience. Um, but then they made it like, oh, you don't have to wear it if you're at your desk. And then, oh, you do have to wear it if you're at your desk. And then they said, if you get vaccinated, you don't have to, uh, wear the mask anymore. So I went like the next weekend to get vaccinated. I was like, fuck this. And then I got COVID after getting vaccinated. Not right after. The, the vaccine did not give me COVID. I'm not spreading propaganda. Um, what, six months later? Eight months later? Eight months is probably closer. No, I'd say it... Maybe almost a year later. It was a little over a year because yeah. I... Because we... When our office flooded, we were working at a temporary office. We moved back in in August of... Yes. And then we, um, we got, cause I remember that cause I got my second shot and I felt like shit and I was dying. Yes. Both of us. <laughs> um, and then I made you go get me popsicles from Walmart. So it had yes. to have been at least a year past that. Cause we, oh yeah, no, it was way past that. Cause we got the vaccines right. when we were in the apartment. Mm hmm. I got, I got COVID when we were in this house and we've been in the house for a little over a year. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So it was well so over a year after, after getting the vaccine, vaccine, I got COVID. COVID. Um, we um, went to the baseball, baseball game. This is where the baseball game plays into it. I was kind of feeling like shit already. Um, just like a sore throat, felt like allergies. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let's go to a baseball game. Um, her friend had extra tickets. Um, so we went, we hung out, had a good time. Um, and I, I don't leave sporting events early. I hate leaving early. Um, but we left the middle of the ninth inning, I think, which sucks because they actually came back to win five to, they scored like five runs in the ninth inning to win the game. Um, but yeah, we left early and outside the stadium, this ball was in the parking lot. So got the ball. <laughs> and yeah, I got yeah, home, home two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I feel like shit. COVID test. We had the in-home test. Came back negative. Went went to sleep maybe an hour. Woke back up. Nope. Test me again. I feel like shit. It was positive. Went got actually tested the next day, and we felt like I was sick. I had COVID positive Sunday. Monday she had it. So, um, we just COVID buddies. But that's the only impact COVID had on my life in any capacity. And yes, I did yes, get paid for that time. I was not working. Yes, I did want to strangle you and for yes, that week. If, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we did want to strangle each other at one point when we both had COVID. Because when I get sick, I'm a big fucking baby. When she gets sick, she wants to clean the fucking house. <laughs> like, just let me fucking lay here and rot away. It, she, didn't, she wasn't about that life. Um, what else? So... We got COVID together. Me and her, we've been through a lot together. We've gotten COVID. Um, we've done a lot of things. We bought a house bought thanks a house. to my dead father's mother. <laughs> we bought a house together um, thanks to inheritance from her grandmother who passed away. I got to um, call her that. So for lack of better terms, we are going to call her that. Um, not really a part of the family that is close. So, But thanks for the 30 Gs, Grandma. Um, 
So we bought a house. Um, we've gone through one of the hardest things that I've ever had to go through in my entire life. Um, so anybody who's watched the stream knows that we had a dog that would accompany us on the stream occasionally. Um, her name was Athena. Um, she was a fucking badass dog. And she passed away from heartworms. Um, October. No, November. The beginning of November, yeah. Beginning of November, we came home to find that she had passed away. Um, and as weird as it is to say, that's like one of the moments that I felt the closest to Momo. Um, because I couldn't have done that. I've always been the person that said, like, oh, it's just a dog. Like, we'll just buy another one, whatever. Um, it's not like that. If you say it, it's like that, it's, it's not. Um, I don't cry when humans die sometimes. Cried my ass off when that dog died. So, not ashamed to say it. Um, but I couldn't have gotten through that without her. She was, like, a rock. As much as a rock as she could be. So, um, yeah. We've gone through a lot of trials together. And, yeah. I told her the other day, like... This shit don't work out. I'm just single. Like, I ain't nobody, ain't nothing, nothing going to be as good as this. So, if this ain't good enough, then ain't nothing good enough. So, um, just being single. If this shit don't work, she dies. Fuck, I guess I'm single. Um, she has life insurance, too, so I'll be all right for a little bit. Um, you'll get enough to pay off the house. Yeah, pay off the house. Live here, mortgage free. Be, maybe be a full time content creator. Um, you won't, you'll be dead. Don't give me that look. <laughs> um, I'll be haunting you. Unplugging the internet modem every five minutes. <laughs> Fuck you, motherfucker! I, I wouldn't know it was you. I would think it was a shitty internet company we have. Um, speaking of wives dying, we were just watching a documentary. So we really like true crime stuff. Um, we're really, really into true crime stuff. And usually it's her that finds it, and then I end up watching it. The first one ever. This is COVID, like COVID at its infancy. And it was the Tiger King let, documentary. Let me tell you, okay. I was, I started watching the Tiger King. And if you've watched it, you know, when it gets to about episode three, there's some questionable scenes that start to happen. Yeah, there's a bunch of gay stuff on the TV. So he walks in from work and goes, are you watching gay porn? <laughs> and I was like... No, it's the Tiger King. And so I started it over from the beginning so he could catch up to what was happening. And, and I, I was like... was hooked. <laughs> um, great, great documentary. Very well done. Now, I had watched some before that. So I had watched Making a Murderer, um, which is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, but not a whole lot. Like, it wasn't my go-to genre. Now it's a recommended thing on my Netflix list. Um, it's like, hey, real shit that happened category um so you'll probably have a, a lot of ease with this one but what are your favorite uh if you were to recommend a true crime to someone who's watching at home um what's like your go-to what's the one thing you're recommending if you had one thing to to recommend um i'm definitely big on like the the jeffrey dahmer cases the uh the john gacy wayne's cases um the ted bundy documentaries you can watch majority of those are on netflix you can watch them they do have a couple of them on hulu um the new Dahmer series they put out on netflix was phenomenal so i definitely recommend watching that um if you're not into sad things i definitely don't recommend watching the trials of gabriel hernandez um what they did to that poor child was terrible and they both deserved to fry because that poor baby didn't deserve that um what is the other one that we just watched? Like the oh, American well, Murderer Next Door? Yeah, the... Uh, um, is it American Murder Next Door? That's not the one we watched today, but the Watts no, family. The murder of the Watts family murders. Yeah. Um, where Chris Watts killed his wife and daughters. I won't ruin the story for you because it's a little twisty. Um, but I will say, if he would have asked for a lawyer, he would have gotten away scot-free. But he thought he too much. If just shut the fuck up. He would, he would have gotten have away for free. I don't know if they have YouTube in prison, but Chris, shut the fuck you up. You fucked next up, time. buddy. <laughs> Five life sentences, I think, is what he got. Um, 
what else there's some other good ones out there i like the aaron hernandez ones we've watched a couple different aaron hernandez ones oh i've watched them all um <laughs> they are phenomenal um i'm surprised you didn't say this yes. one one of my favorite of all time the best fucking story ever is the fire festival the fire festival if you don't know what it is go watch it it's on netflix it's called the fire festival the best party that never happened um phenomenal this dude is clinically insane um a phenomenal story so i don't remember it it was a social media thing i don't remember it but um there was another we too one. poor to afford ticket that's why we never heard of it <laughs> woodstock 99 not really true crime um but, but that was good too very, that was another good, good one. documentary um True crime, though. Um, the People versus OJ on Netflix is really good. I just watched a new OJ one where he stole all the shit back and he like set up this robbery in Vegas. Um, we did also watch what is that other one? Like the the Bling Queen or something like that, where she, her and her oh. friend robbed all those famous rich people in LA and were getting away with it for a really long time. Yeah, they would. And like, then I don't remember how they got caught. They would find out that celebrities were going to like the Oscars or some award show, and they would know where they lived, and they would just go rob. Like Paris Hilton was one of the people they robbed. Multiple times. Multiple times they stole her, and they were like going shopping in these people's closets. Like clothes still had price tags on them. Um, that was a really good one. I don't remember the name of it, but I'll post a picture. I don't think it was Bling Queen because it was multiple people. It, it's something Bling, but it'll be yeah. it'll it'll pop up on the screen. The Bling Ring or something, I think is what it was called. Maybe that that sounds right. We'll we'll put it right there. If it's already been up, bing, there it is again. Um. And then we watched uh, another one about the how to get away with a drug scandal. Oh, how to get away with a drug scandal was fantastic. Uh, or how to fix a drug scandal is what it was called. And then we also watched that one documentary about that kid in, was he in the UK, I think, was selling all those drugs online. That's my favorite one. He was in Switzerland? I don't know. But he was... Somewhere, he was somewhere in Europe um what was that one called shiny flakes is what it was called phenomenal now this one's dubbed it's not in english so it's dubbed in english i don't know if you can watch it in its original language but basically the guy the kid found out that you could sell drugs online so he just started manufacturing and selling mdma cocaine crack all this other stuff um all these different types of drugs he started selling them online he had his own website um funniest part about it is he used an xbox 360 or no the xbox one since it had the shiny and matte finish he would put the drugs on the shiny finish and he would get a cool picture off of it because the reflection of light um so i thought that was interesting he used an xbox to uh sell drugs um that was a really good one i do enjoy that um what other ones did we have I think that covers most of the good ones. Gabriel Fernandez is a heart. Oh, another really good one that I actually like still look up every day. Not every day, but a lot. Maybe once or once, twice a month. I'll check in on it. It is the Melissa. Oh, is she still pending trial? Because they're trying to say she killed her daughter. And even though her, yeah. her other kid, they wouldn't let her kids testify saying that like, no, this is not what happened. This is what really happened. They wouldn't let her kids testify in court. She, she, her stay, she got a stay of execution. She was the first female in She Texas. was the first Latin, Latin female in Texas yeah, that was convicted for the. Sentenced to death. And she had a really shitty trial. God, I can't, I hate that. I can't remember her name. Um. Melissa, fuck, M M Melissa Lucio. Um, it's the I think it's called the State of Texas versus Melissa Lucio. I think is what it's called. Um, very good. Like I've never watched a true crime documentary and then been on the murderer side, because she's not a murderer. She didn't kill those kids. Or did she kill a kid? No, she didn't. The little girl had fought on the stairs. Yeah. And she, uh, they said that because the little girl was fine, they sent her home.
And then the little girl ended up dying because she fell down the stairs and they were trying to say that the mom killed her. Yeah. And because she had these bruises on her from where she fell down the stairs that they just put two and two together and said, oh, she's got bruises on her. She's dead. We're going to convict her of killing her child. And even her older kids said, no, she didn't touch her. She fell down the stairs. We watched her fall down the stairs. This is what happened. Like, I think she was upstairs cleaning and one of the other kids seen her fall down the stairs and they wouldn't let those kids testify in court to say what truly happened. They just went based off of, well, she's got bruises and you're her mom, so you killed her. Yeah. So while she may not have been the best mother, she didn't kill them kids or that kid. Um, she didn't do it. So I've been following that case a lot as well. I really like that one. Um, which this has given me an idea. So what we're probably going to do, we'll have to talk about it, but... I just want to do a true crimes documentary where we just pick one story and we talk about it. Um, and we'll do like a series of the Inside Scoops podcast edition or uh, Inside Scoops true crime edition. Um, and I think me and Momo will do some true crime documentaries for you. If you are into it, let us know in the comments down below. Um, but I think another big case that people still follow is... Um... The Casey Anthony case. Casey Anthony's a big one right now. It's very, very um, popular because of that new stuff that came out on HBO. No, she's on Peacock. Peacock, that's what it was. And I will tell you, when when I first, when it first broke out in Florida, this mom killed her kid, I was 100%, oh, this bitch fucking did it. She killed her kid. And then started watching, like, her half of the story and seeing, like, what she was saying was happening. And I was like, I'm not convinced she fully did this. I don't think she's the only one who played a part in it. She killed that kid. If she did not kill the kid, she covered up the murder, which is just bad. She, so. I a thousand percent think she covered it up. Um, I think the baby could have died of negligence, and she didn't. She freaked out and didn't know what to do. Um, but Nancy, Nancy Gray, Nancy Grace, whoever your mom was showing us that day. Um, mm -hmm. She had some she had interviews with some people about that case that it's hard to not believe. And the reason I, I take the Peacock one with a grain of salt is because Casey Anthony has not agreed to an interview until that one. That is the first interview since the death of her daughter that she's agreed to because it was on her terms. So, so she's she painting the light, light in the way that she wants it. to paint the light. And she can literally say what she wants and she can get her story out there, which is fine. But that's not how interviews are supposed to work. Um, interviews should be a collective of opinions. So if we're, we're just hearing her side of it, she's telling us what she wants to tell us. And we're not really getting the questions answered that we want answered. That's the only reason... I wasn't, I wasn't a huge a fan, fan of the format, format that that one was put in. So that's that's me. But maybe for another episode um, to deep dive into the Casey Anthony case. Um, that would be fun. I think it would be really, really fun. Because um, me and Momo, while we like the same things, we see things very, very differently when we're watching these. Um, Casey Anthony, for instance. I, you, there's not a thing you could tell me in the world that she didn't do it. She did um the other one i like too is what is it the worst neighbor next door oh or the the worst, worst roommate, roommate ever yeah the worst roommate with, ever with that old lady with that little grandma who was killing those people and putting them in her garden yeah oh grandma i don't know how she did it this lady was like five foot nothing and weighed like 100 pounds maybe she was killing these people and burying them in the garden yep um another true crime it's i think it's dramatized so it's an actual show um, Waco, the Waco series. Mm -hmm. What is that on? Hulu? Maybe? I think it is on Hulu. It might be on Netflix. Hulu or Netflix, but the Waco with um, David. David Koresh. David. What was the guy who played him? The guy from Friday Night Lights plays him. Um, Taylor Hirsch, I think is his name. Right there. Um, did a phenomenal yeah. job playing this guy. Um, very, very cool story. And that actually happened like an hour away from our house. So. Pretty cool. Um, it's actually not there. Me and AJ almost went when we were in Waco at the zoo. Um, but as I was trying to look up where it was, I've also found out that there's still people that live there. 
Um, the building itself is not there. The only thing left of the actual building is the swimming pool. Um, but there's houses like right down the street from it and on your way to it. And they're not, they don't really take too kindly to visitors. Visitors. Yeah. They, they're trying to get out of that spotlight, understandably. So, but there's still a church there. They did rebuild like a little small church. That's a little country church. So. Um, and they are still called the Branch Davidians and they still believe in the same things they believed in. Are they still a cult? I don't know. Hopefully not. They are. Um, you can't. But, you can't change a cult. If you're a cult, you're going to be a cult regardless. Yeah, but when your Jesus Christ has been killed, he was the one pushing all the guns and drugs and all the stuff that, you know, he was sleeping with everybody's wives and all that stuff. So, um, very crazy guy. If you haven't looked him up, David Koresh. Speaking of sleeping with other people's wives, I didn't sleep was... with anybody's wife. No, there was a documentary that I watched about this. He was an OBGYN in Indiana and he was yes. doing like fertility treatment on all those women. And instead of using their husband's samples, he was using his own samples. So these people were getting yes. pregnant thinking it was their husband's children. And it wasn't, it was the yes. OBGYNs the whole time. It's called and he Our ended Father. Up, and he ended up having what, like 80 something kids? Something like it was some from, crazy like, amount of kids. He did it for like three years. Um, and he would impregnate his patients with his own seed instead of theirs, like the husband's. Um, that was an insane, that was another one I came in like midway through and I'm like, oh, this, whatever, I don't really care about this. And then you'll see me, if I'm ever streaming and she's watching one of these, this is what you'll see. And I'm just like watching the TV. Um, so it happens all the time. Like... And she's going to give me shit for this one. Aside from true crime. She watched the show Wednesday. I did. I kind of want to watch it. Because, I loved it. Because people won't stop talking about it. And that's the only reason it was... I want to watch it. Okay. I think Jenna Ortega played a fantastic Wednesday. She had the look. She had the blank stare. She had the heartless expressions. She played a fantastic the Wednesday. The parts that I have seen, I definitely picked up on that. Um... Where I was like, wow, she does play a really good Wednesday Adams. Um, I was never really a fan of the Adams family. Um, and I, I feel like I can't watch it now because I gave her so much shit about not wanting to watch it with her. So I can't watch it. If I try to watch it, um, um, well, I told you this was a good show. I tried to tell you to watch it last time. That's what I'm going to hear. So not like that. She doesn't do the whole head movement. But that's a common thing, though, is I will start watching something and you will say, no, I don't want to watch that. And then you'll get sucked in and we have to start it over so you can catch up. Now I just start watching them on my own. What was the one I thought you had watched? We I just finished it the other day. It was a four part series. Oh, um, I texted you about it. My phone's over there. Um, the. Uh... Oh, the bad vegan. I thought she had already watched that. Another phenomenal true crime story. I felt really bad for that girl. That's another one. I don't think. I don't think she really. She had someone pulling the strings. Um, big time. And she was just in too deep. By the time she realized it. She was just in too deep. And she had already given this dude. One and a half million dollars. Yeah. So. Definitely watch that one too. So. Cool. Well. Uh, what else you got for me? If I. If I. If, I, if you. You wanted me to tell any story that the stream or YouTube doesn't already know. Is there anything that you can think of that you would want me to explain? We don't talk about the heist. Oh, the heist. <laughs> oh, I was avoiding this, by the way. Okay. Do you want to hear my half of the story before he tells his part of the story? Okay. Two, two renditions of the story. Go for it. Okay. He said he was going to play this game with Jake. And I said, okay. I ordered groceries. I need you to be done at this time so we can go pick them up. And he said, I'll be done by that time. I'll be done by that time. No, no, we'll be done. We'll be done, right? I'm like, okay. So five o'clock comes around and I'm like, hey, don't forget, we got to go pick up the groceries. Oh, yeah, I'll be done by then. Six o'clock came along. He was not done. And I had to go pick up these groceries by myself and carry them up three flights of stairs by myself because he was still playing the stupid casino heist and swore he was going to be done and he was not done and then had the nerve to get mad at me for being mad at him for lying about being done on time after i told him not to do that. 
shit. My mic was muted that whole fucking time. Rewind. Um, so, let me explain. So, everything she said is true. Here's the thing. She didn't have to go pick up groceries till 6 o'clock. I started doing this heist at around noon. So, I'm doing this heist. Now, if anybody not familiar, it's the Diamond Casino Heist and GTA. I don't know your max party size, but I think it's four, maybe six. I don't actually know. Um, we were doing it with two people. It was just me and him. We're trying to get the most bang for our buck. Um, and it took us forever. It took us a long time. It took us much longer than I thought. And I kept thinking we were almost done. And we weren't. Um, and I was like, all right, we got it on this try. We know exactly what we need to do. Um, and we couldn't get it. Eventually, yes, we got it. But that's besides the point. Two people takes longer than you think to do the heist. And then she came home and she was mad at me. I was not mad at her for being mad. I was mad at her for not letting me try to make it right. Um... So, for those of you who don't know, Momo, when she gets mad, there is no changing that. You just have to let her be mad. I'm not okay with that. Um, I want to say my apologies. Let's talk it out. Let's get everything out of our chest. Let's just get all the weight off. Let's throw it out there, say what we have to say, and then we can move on with our life. And we don't have to sit here and be mad because it's exhausting being mad. It's exhausting being mad at her. Like, it's so fucking hard. Um, so I try. I was like, look, I got off the game. I said, look, let me let me give you a massage. I don't want you to touch me. That sounds about right. I know it sounds right. Um, no, blah, 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 blah. I think I ended up sleeping on the couch. Um you just going to skip the part where you threw your controller at the wall? I got mad. I threw my controller. I don't have it on me. I think it's over there. But I threw my controller at the wall, so now I have two controllers that are merged together, basically. Um, I don't know where it is. But, um, yeah, so I got mad at her and threw the controller at the wall, and that did nothing but break the controller and the part of the wall. Um... So, yeah, I was mad, but I was not mad at her being mad at me. I don't, I don't care if she's mad at me, if, especially if I deserve it. Like I would have been mad at me too. But I'm trying to make it right. At least talk to me. So if I can give you any relationship advice, is if when your partner wants to talk, talk. Communication is key. Let them talk so you don't have to buy another controller. Um, she did end up buying me another controller. Not that she had to, because she's that kind of a person. Um, she did end up buying me a new controller with MLB 20. That would have been MLB 20. Or MLB 21. One of those two. Um, so, yeah. She did end up buying me a new controller, which was very nice of her. Um, but, yeah. So, that was... The story that I really don't talk about on stream. We don't talk about the, the diamond heist is like Bruno. We don't talk about the diamond heist. Um, so this is the last time you'll hear about it. It will not be spoken about again. Oh, we came a long way from that. come then. a very long way from that. I was actually just thinking the other day. I didn't want to say anything out loud, but I'll risk it for the biscuit here. Um, uh, we haven't argued in a really long time. Like she said shit that, that pisses, pisses me off. Me off. Um, and it's not really what she says, it's how she says it. And it just pisses me off. I'm just like, fuck you. Like, I don't care. And she can't hear me when I do it. If I'm in here and she's like, you didn't have to do that. I said whatever she said. I'm like, fuck, you don't have to be a bitch. Like, <laughs> but she can't ever hear it. You know? uh, so, we've come a long way. And we can joke about stuff like this. And it's not really going to affect us. Um, but yeah. So any, so, well, that's well, definitely that's over an hour there. Right. Any final words, final words for anybody? Not really. Yeah, yeah I think we, I think we covered everything. Covered everything. Um, we'll definitely we'll see more Momo, Momo on, here. on here. I really I like really the idea like of doing a uh, true crime true series, crime. even if it's like a it's just like a 30 minute conversation about whatever new true crime that we watched or something like that. I think it'd be really fun to like do a recap and our thoughts and stuff like that. So. 
Maybe. Maybe. Stay tuned to find out, guys. Again, I'm Scoops. This is my lovely, beautiful wife, Momo. And we thank you for showing up. Love you guys. Peace. We'll see you on the next episode.